Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the buffer overflow today. And the way I like to explain the buffer overflow is let's take a local application. And most people have used Quicken. Uh, Microsoft has a program like it called Microsoft Money. So let's think about either one of those programs. Uh, when the program loads into memory uh, and that uh, rectangle, the slightly darker rectangle represents the program in memory. There's actually two things that are in memory. One is the user data and the other is the program instructions. And the program instructions tell the program what to do with the user data which represents the data entered by the user. So let's you know run through this real quick to make sure we got the difference between user data and program instructions. Uh, let's say you start out with a balance of a thousand dollars. If you enter your rent payment for six hundred, the program knows to subtract six hundred from balance. Let's say you make a deposit of five hundred dollars. Well, uh, the program knows to add five hundred dollars to the balance. So the program instructions are telling the computer what to do. <coughs> now, before the user data is brought into the program instructions area of memory, the best practice is, of course, to check that user data and make sure that it is a uh, size of number or you know the right type of data like if it was supposed to be a number, it shouldn't be a letter. But also, it's the right size uh, to go to fit into the area of program instructions set aside uh, for it before the manipulation on it begins. Where the buffer overflow comes in is if the user uh, data is not checked before being brought into its uh, space and program instructions. Now, let's so if that's the case, we can put uh, user data and we can overflow the space set aside for it. And this, uh, what I have up on the screen right now, illustrates a concept called a no op sled. And a no op is kind of like uh, before computers they had typewriters. Well if you just hit enter and held it down the carriage would space but there wouldn't be anything typed. So a no op stand, stands for no operation basically takes up space and memory without uh, the computer doing anything. So that's why it's called a no op. But you can overflow the user data portion uh, with these uh, no op commands until it gets into the program instructions and uh, then once you're there you can cause the, the uh, machine to do anything uh, that you want. Now you are limited to whatever the user uh, th that's operating the program, whatever his credentials are, his or her credentials are. But uh, basically though you could do anything, Let's, you know, and certainly if the user running Quicken is an administrator, you can basically do anything. In this case, <coughs> we have install hacker.exe now. That might be a program in line, or it could be go to this website, download it, and install it. So that's a pretty basic concept of what, what a buffer overflow is. but. The ones that are more of a concern now are actually the buffer overflows uh, that are generated from browsers and from using uh, information from the web. Now, now how that works is that big arrow up top there, that's uh, that portable computer requesting, well it shows here a media clip, which is good, a media clip is, you know, that's kind of what I wanted. And <coughs> so the top arrow is a request for a media resource. Usually those are called requests for resources, but in this case it's a picture, we'll say. So you go get it, 
uh, the web server serves it down, re represented by the second arrow. Now, how this uh, works is your browser will render text or whatever. But when it gets to an image, it goes, aha, this is an image. We better ship that over to a program that will give us the coordinates of how to display that. So that's the image rendering program, which is illustrated at the bottom right here by uh, this machine doing some calculations. Because that's what it is, really, is you're calculating how you want uh, the browser to display, <coughs> to display the image. Now, what can happen is, is that image that you're downloading can take advantage of an unchecked buffer in this image rendering program and thus, thus exploit your computer. And it will exploit it to whatever level of permissions the user that's currently uh, doing the bra uh, browsing, whatever his permissions are, uh, that's how much control the um, hacker's code will have. Thanks for watching this.